Miami, Ohio versus Toledo. I thought this was a great game because I love a team with a backup quarterback that plays gritty defense. And they've been doing it all year. And you know what? Let's also shout out Miami. I'm I'm not going to say that they're the best team in the country, but they are the second best team in the country. ATS on the year. 10-3 and they were covering at. And uh, I was on Miami of Ohio to cover this game, the 7.5. I did take Toledo to win. You took Toledo to win and cover. So what were some things in this game that led to Toledo's demise, ultimately? Just out-coaching, I I thought. Like, Kendall's a good coach, right? He's built a really good roster there. But Miami, Ohio, and that staff has done wonders. And they threw the ball 16 times because they didn't have to throw more than that. And they used Smith in the legs. That you got created with Rashad Amos running the football. Um, that front seven played very well. I mean, you held it in two of the most dynamic players in the Mac and Taquan Finn and Penny Boone in check, right? And, and Finn got his, but it was a very inefficient day for him. And obviously the, the turnover you know, costed them. So yeah, two turnovers for Finn. I mean, Red Hawks just doing their thing. And then that fourth quarter was awesome. I mean, classic Miami Red Hawk football, you know? Yeah, I mean, shout out Chuck Martin there. I mean, dude, he's been there for a while, right? He's been there almost 10 years. Before that, he was at Notre Dame. I mean, he's he's coached some pretty decent places. I think he has a losing record overall as Miami, Ohio head coach. But look, it's got to feel good to win the MAC, especially when you had a team like Toledo, who arguably is one of the best G5 teams in the entire country, if you're looking at metrically, and what they've been able to do against all types of competition They've just been awesome. And this Miami Ohio defense, dude, they swarm, dude. They swarm. And before the season, you know, if you were to ask me, like, we didn't preview this team specifically this year. Hopefully we can get to that uh, next year while we actually – we made this podcast in June, so we didn't really all have a whole lot of time to put stuff together. But hopefully we can have some stuff on uh, Miami Ohio and Toledo for next year. I would have told you that this team is a good team. And they return a lot of talent, but I would have told you a lot of it relied on Brett Gabbard. But guess what? Through the adversity, through it all, they prevailed and they found ways to put the ball in the end zone. Dude, and I'll say this. Smith is not a good quarterback at all. He's not. He doesn't make the throws that Brett Gabbard makes. He doesn't make any throws, if you're being honest. Amos does a good job running the ball. What Miami Ohio does, they take care of the football and they take away the football and they play the field position game. So that's what you got to do sometimes. And Mac, it's been awesome this year. And it's really cool to see a team like Miami Ohio win 11 games. And in some of the fashion that they did, I think they scored like over 30 points. Let's see. Against uh, Mac opponents, they only did it like twice. That was against Ohio and then against Western Michigan. So other than that, they were just doing it just just in a gritty fashion, which I love, man. Gotta gotta respect that. So I'm a big fan. Miami Ohio unders were pretty generous to us this year, I do believe. But uh about the game though, like the the two block field goals was crazy. Even though the one of them, they still got the first down on it. Or Toledo, they they picked it yeah. up and they ran it for the two yards. It didn't matter, it was the end of the game. Um, and they threw a pick a couple plays later, but just Mac, it's just Mac for you. And, and this was, this was awesome. I mean, really happy yeah. for, for Miami, Ohio. They deserve it after it's tough. To, this was the weekend of backup quarterbacks, by the way, like that quarterbacks, I believe went three and one, right. And the only one that lost was Deacon Hill. Okay. You had the Florida state third stringer, Miami, Ohio backup and SMU backup. All three of those teams, right. Obviously it was not pretty. For, for all three of them, but they got it done. And that's the thing is, like, we talked about it, like, football is more than the quarterback, right? Like, you need a quarterback to be elite for sure, but, like, to win a singular football game, a lot can happen. If you got good coaching and good good talent around you. Yeah, I, I agree. You can do a lot. And, and, look, another guy that people don't think about a lot, like, when you're previewing this game, it's really easy to overlook. Alec? Bevelheimer. If you don't know who that is, it's Miami of Ohio's punter. Top 12 in the country in average punt yardage. Punt punt yardage per punt. 
And uh, look, he did it again this game, punted four inside the 20. Look, if you're Miami High, you have great defense, do the Iowa thing, play the field position, right? Get those punts, move up and down the field, slowly, slowly, slowly. And occasionally you're going to have drives or turnovers that help you put the ball in the end zone. So I love it for Miami. I love it. They deserve it. I love it. Want to see, like, not that Miami of Ohio is like a new MAC team, but like, it's good to see, like, other MAC teams that aren't necessarily Toledo, Ohio, uh, Northern Illinois, like your, your your classics that we've seen in the last like six Western Michigan, the classic teams that we see in the last you know seven or eight years that have won it. Uh, yeah, feed me Miami, Ohio. I love that. 